good morning everyone welcome to the session so let's uh, get started so before getting started uh, do we have anyone who joined today newly uh, i hope everyone of you are uh, from the previous class right anyone newly joined today uh, i take that answer as no let's uh, continue let's quickly look at what we have learned yesterday so yesterday we started looking at the course content so in this and uh, uh, in this course we are going to learn the threads when i say threads like we are going to see the complete details of threads like uh, executor framework concurrency thread pools inter thread communication dead lock a lock mechanism reentrant lock retrade lock feature volatile atom city semaphore cyclic barrier countdown latch thread group thread local producer consumer problem right so yesterday first we have gone through the entire course content and the prerequisite for this course is to have the core java knowledge right? i mean you just uh, if you are just foundational in the core java that is enough and the timing of the class is every day morning 9 am to 10 am and the fee of the course is to 1500 rupees the duration of the course is uh, 25 to 30 days monday to friday and the recording access will be given up to 6 months so this is about the first part uh, we have discussed about the course content does anyone has any questions on this okay i take that silence as no questions now we started with a topic called uh, definition of a thread right yesterday we have looked at what is a thread so thread is nothing but a independent path of execution within a same program so we just learned uh, the thread definition like so there are so many confusions on if someone is asking what is a thread so i can i can hear some answer saying that it's a lightweight process it's a process it's a parallel execution but the definition of a thread is nothing but a independent path of execution within a program and uh, guys uh, are you able to hear me can someone confirm yes sir yeah i think kamal it's your issue uh, others are able to hear me kamal just give me a minute okay fine now so we looked at the definition of a thread and uh, we have written a program like uh, we have created a project and uh, what i have done i have created a simple thread by extending a thread class and overridden the run method and then i call the start method whenever i am debugging i have whenever the start method is called it has created an independent path of execution so that is what the definition says that thread is nothing but a independent path of execution within a same program right so this is what uh, we have discussed uh, in the yesterday class any questions anyone okay now i hope uh, i take that no questions and let's uh, continue with the today's class today we are going to look at what are the different ways to create a thread <clears throat> let me write and dwell as well okay what are the different ways to create a thread object can someone answer extend thread class implement runnable interface implement a callable interface yeah the first one extending thread class second one implementing runnable okay third one implementing callable 
So runnable and callable are interfaces. You can implement a runnable or callable interface, or you can extend a thread class. These are the three ways to create a thread object in Java. Now let us look at the first way, extending thread class. Now, so let's create uh, one more called thread example one. So now extends thread class. Thread is a class in Java, which is provided by Java. Okay. So I have extended the thread class done. Now, so now uh, as per the inheritance guys, if I create a child object, what does it mean? Can I use the, ch uh, using a child object, can I call the parent class methods? So now, as per the inheritance principle, let us look at uh, one thing. I have a class called A. And I also have a class called B. B. Can someone tell me B extends A. Now, if I create, I, I will write a main method. And then B, B equal to new B. Now, what does it mean? What is the meaning of this line? B B equal to new B. It is creating object. For? For B class. class. That means can I say that's a child class? Yes. B extends A is nothing but can I say this is an inheritance relationship? Yes. Yes. In her in this inheritance, B is child and A is parent. Now uh so now, whenever I call B, can I say, whenever the object is created, can I say it will call the B class constructor? Yes. Yeah. And from here, uh, what is the first line? Like, uh, if I do not write anything, super. what happens? Yeah. It will call super, followed by no argument. That means, always compiler will insert a call to the super, followed by no argument. That means, can I say, uh, it when it's whenever we have a super followed by this line if you do not write the compi uh, compiler will provide what does it mean it will since you have a inheritance extends a what is the a parent class uh, parent for b a so it will go to the a class constructor correct and so what is the parent for a from here again the same super call will be there but what is the parent for a what is the parent for a Object. object object class so from here object class constructor will be invoked correct now what is the hierarchy of constructors here object class constructor will be executed then a class constructor will be executed then it will come to the b class constructor correct yes and in the b class let us take that i uh, in the a class let us take that i have a method called m1 public void m1 out m1 method of a now by creating a b object can i call the m1 method present in a class can i call it yes because this is nothing but inheritance whenever you're calling the child class object uh, you can access the public methods present in your parent class, correct? If it is a private, I cannot access because private means it is for only for this class. If it is a public means you can access uh, from the child object also, correct? Uh, does everyone know this concept? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. Now let's go into this one, uh, thread example one. Now, what is the first uh, first way we discussed? Uh, we are discussing that extending a thread class. So, can I say that I have extended the thread class? Now, in my scenario, what is child? Thread example. Thread example one is child. Who is parent? Thread. Thread is parent. Okay. Now, what I should do first? I have to say now. Once you create a thread, uh, extending a thread class in order to create a thread. So you need to create thread object first, correct? So whenever I say thread class object means, 
can i say i have to call the thread class constructor then only i can say see for here what is meant by this line in line number 19 sorry in line number 12 what i am doing i am creating an object for b class what does it mean if i am invoking the constructor of a b then can i say that i am creating an object of b class yes now similarly here whenever i come to the thread example one so i have cre i extended thread class then in order to create a thread first i need to create a thread object thread object means in let's go to the thread class so here uh, do we have many constructors see all these are constructors only correct whatever you have, you can see here is it a constructor or a method constructor what is the difference between a constructor and a method return type won't be there for constructor yeah constructor name is same name as a method uh, class name and uh, constructor will not have a return type but whereas method will have a return type okay and method name can be same as a class name but generally we follow the small letter okay now so since see if i am calling this constructor i can say that i created a thread object correct now if so what is the way so here in order to create a thread object can i say that i will thread t equal to new thread correct can i do like this this is one way but according to the inheritance principle what we have done here whenever i am creating a child class from child class your super class constructor is also getting called now instead of doing like this what is see here instead of creating a parent class object if i create a child class object like this thread example one t equal to new thread example what is the advantage so from here it will go to the constructor of thread example one from there it will go to the constructor of thread class it is going to the constructor of thread class means can i say that it's a thread object is getting created or not yes yeah so the advantage of having child creating a uh, child class object is you can access a child class methods now for example if i am creating instead of creating a so now let us take i have a method called public void m2 now i have a method called m2 in a b and i have a method called m1 now by using a b i can access parent class methods i can access child class methods correct but if i am creating a object of only parent class i can access only m1 method but can i access a uh, child class methods can i access no that means there is no reusability correct the advantage of inheritance is it will provide the reusability that means you can access parent class methods you can access child class method. Now, you guys tell me, creating a thread object like this would be best beneficiary or creating a thread object would be like this beneficiary? Line number 10 is beneficiary. Yeah, because apart see here, if you are creating a thread class object, only thread class methods you can access. But in this is a user defined class. In this class, if you are creating some methods, for example, public, void, display you are creating one method can i access this method using a thread object no but if i create a child object from child class constructor you are going to the parent class constructor you can access the thread class method you can access the child class methods also so that is the reason whenever you are extending a thread class you will be creating a object like this instead of like this hope you get it now yes now now so in once once the thread object is created now uh, will it be termed as a thread no so now uh, we have seen that the definition of a thread is nothing but independent path of execution when can i get an independent path of execution so in the thread class there is a method called start do you guys see there is a method called start yes yeah so this method is responsible to create a thread how it is creating it is not i mean it is using the internal operating system and then it is creating so this method is responsible to create a thread object now this method is is it a static method or instance method instance so in order to call the instance method present in a thread class i need a thread class object or see here it is similar to the a class m1 method in the a class I have a m1 method how can i call this m1 method by object of a class or by using a child class object also similarly now 
I can call the start method by using this one also because of inheritance. Now I can say that t dot start. Okay. Once you call the start method, the start method is responsible to create independent path of execution. From here, it will go to this one in the start method. And they are checking if you call the two times the start method, it will throw the illegal threat state exception, which we will discuss later. Now, internally, they will be using start zero. And this is a native method. Look at here. Native method means the implementation will be there in the operating system. So now if someone is asking you which is exactly creating an independent path of execution, the start method, right? Let's debug as Java application. See here, whenever I go to start, so if I earlier yesterday in the program, whenever I'm debugging, I, I have got the independent path of execution. Now let us debug now. Did I get the independent path of execution? No, it is same main method, right? See, am I getting? No, see it is done, it is completed. Did I get an independent path of execution here? Let's uh, let's run the exam yesterday program. Yes. Now, if you run this ex this program, now if you look and see, whenever I say start, it is going into the start method. Okay. After that, see, are you say are you seeing one more independent path of execution? Yes. And can I say from your start zero method? It is calling this, it is creating an independent path of execution. And where is the starting of that independent path of execution? What is the starting point of that independent path? Like uh, from the run. Run method, correct? Now, if you run a ja normal Java program, if you run as Java application or debug as Java application, where it will start? What is the starting point? for a Java program? Main. Main method, correct? Now, similarly, whenever you are saying that uh, thread dot start, it is going internally. And from start zero, you can see immediately. Now let's debug again, okay? Now, if I debug this thread example. So here, t dot start, it is going to the uh, parent class start method, done. So here, start zero from this if i see till now how many executions are there one only one which is nothing but a main method right now if i click on further fi f6 what happens look at here immediately one more thread is created agree yes. and if you can see they are making that once that independent path of execution is created they are taking using one variable called started and they are making it as true. That means they are creating a thread, done. So whenever there is an independent path of execution, what is the starting point? Directly it went to a run method, correct? So that means yes. what is the starting point of a thread program? Run method. Run method. The starting point of a general Java program is main method the starting point of a thread program is run method okay now this is good now in this exam thread example one i will run the same program why am i not getting uh, the thread flow of execution let us see i call the start method then i'm going to this one see here whenever i say start zero where it is going it is creating an independent path and that independent path is executing what method Run method. Okay. But if I click on F8, is it creating an independent path? No. Why? Can someone answer now? It's simple. Still, uh, it's not at started. No, it is started. The thing is, in the earlier program, what I have done? Can I say I have over it in the run method? Yes, and I have kept the breakpoint here. If I do not keep a breakpoint, can I, it will also not come into that, right? That means it will execute. But see, what is the difference between a running and debugging? 
if you put a break point your control will come to that point and you can see what is happening right now here in the first example can i say that inside a run method i have kept the break point yes now in the thread example one did i run uh, did i write the run method no no then can i say in my thread class do i have a run method let's see yes okay did i keep a break point in this run method earlier no no so let's go to this uh, thread class yeah see this is the run method now if i put a break point here can i say it will come now earlier i did not keep a break point if i do not keep a break point what is happening independent path of execution is creating and then it is completing this run method and it it's completing we are not i'm not able to see that because i do not i have not kept the break point it has execution is completed right now let us run the program now debug as java application i am explaining this because whenever you are debugging you will you will forget to put a break point in run method and you will say sir independent path of execution is not happening in order to look at it what you need to do you have to put a break point in the run method so that you can see now let's see start say start zero if i click break if i click f8 start zero will create a independent path and that independent path of execution starting point is run method now i have kept the break point now do you see independent path execution is created and it is in which class it it is in run method of thread class correct is it creating yes that means whenever you are debugging uh, in your own what is the prerequisite or what do you remember you need to put a break point in the run method so that you can observe whether the thread is getting created or not does it understood yes any questions anyone so far does anyone has any question so far okay i take that as a no now let's uh, let me ask you some more questions on the core java now uh, let us take that i have in parent class i have a method called m1 now in the child class also i will write the same method in the child class also i am writing the same method what is this concept is called as if i have the same method in parent class and child class overriding overriding now whenever i say b dot m1 which method will be invoked the child, child class okay if i say a dot m1 which method will be invoked parent class okay how do you know this the uh, to which class it is referring to like yeah. new of a so the simple fundamental is first you need to check say b is what it's an object it's an object of which class it's a b class correct now what the compiler will do is in the b class do i have a m1 method first if it is there then it will execute this if it is not there then it will go to the parent class now same thing here now uh, now the topic that we are going to uh, study is or learn is why to override the run method see here whenever you are doing a uh, thread thread is independent path that means in order to do the parallel execution you will go for a thread correct if i write a uh, for example now assume that in i have a for loop let us take i am taking 1000 uh, okay 10000 now i am doing here some i am calling a m1 method assume that okay or let us take display okay if i call this display method can someone tell me how does the flow is happening when i equal to 0 display will be called when i call i mean after completion of 0 then only i will go to the one and again it will call correct yes so is it sequential or parallel sequence sequential but if i create a thread i will create 10 threads or four threads let us two now what is the work here in the in the for loop what are you doing you, your work is to call the display method correct if you are using a for loop what is happening when i equal to 
uh, it will execute. I equal to one, it will execute. But when see, after completion of I equal to zero, then only it can go to the I equal to one. Can I say that I equal to zero is, uh, is will it happen that I equal to zero executes the display method while it is in, in progress, while it is in progress, I equal to one execute display method while it is in progress, uh, I equal to two execute display method. Can it happen like this in the for loop? Will, will it work in the for loop? No, no. That means uh, whatever you're writing in the for loop, can I say it will execute sequentially, right? After completion of I equal to zero execution, then only it will go to I equal to one. After completion of I equal to one, then only it will go to I equal to two. But this will be taking, uh, for example, if this display method is taking uh, two minutes of time. Okay. Now, in order to complete this loop, how much time it will take? Each iteration, so I equal to zero, it will take uh, two minutes. I equal to one, it will take two minutes. Like that. How many times 20, it is looping? 20,000 minutes. Okay. 10,000 multiplied by two, it will take 20,000 minutes. Correct? Yes. Now, but if I, if I say my, what is my work here? I want to call this display method. Okay. Now, instead of, let us take, uh, instead of uh, 10,000, let us take four. I want to execute four. Now, uh, if I look at four, four into two, I, I, this method will take at least eight minutes. Now, if I create my work here, what is my work? I want to call the display method. Instead of writing a for loop, what I will do? Whenever I call the start method, can I say all these threads will be independent path of executions? Correct? Yes. Now, uh, so now what is my work? I have to call the run method. So what is the starting point for an independent path of execution in thread? Just now we have seen whenever you call start zero, where it is going? Run method. Now mm -hmm. what I will do is I will overwrite the run method. And inside a run method, I will call the display method. Okay. I'm just calling the display method inside the run method. Now let us see whether this will execute parallelly or not. Let us put a breakpoint here. Now you guys tell me whenever start zero is happening, will it call the pairing class run method or child class run method? Child class run method. Yeah. Because first it will check again thread example, new thread. Correct. Start will call internally. The start method will internally call the run method. But if you are overriding, it will call the child class run method. Now, let's put a break. Now, let us execute. See, earlier, what is happening? This display method is a sequential. It has taken eight minutes. Now, if you look at, see, one thread is, let me remove this breakpoint. See, whenever I say start zero, the thread is created, correct? One thread is executing, done. Now let's go back to the thread example. Let's put a breakpoint here and then execute. So if you look at one thread is created, see second thread, third thread. Can I say four threads are executing parallelly or independent, uh, sequentially? Parallel. So now can I say the first thread is executing display method, second thread display method, third thread display method, fourth thread display method. That means can I say uh, how much time will it take to execute all our see each method will take see this will take two minutes 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 but can i say these two minutes are happening parallelly yes or no yes. so yes. that means what is the time taken by this entire program if you are using that two minutes only correct maybe let us take like a thread creation is taking one minute so total minutes is three minutes but if you are going with a sequential programming, the time is eight minutes. So what is the advantage of a thread? Using threads, you can do the parallel processing, right? Now, does it understood for everyone? What is the advantage of using a threads? Yes. Okay. Now using threads, you can do the parallel processing, which will reduce the time. Okay. Now, now the question here is, why should I override this run method? Now, what is the work I have to do here in this example? I want to call the display method. Where did I write? Because the th whenever you start the thread, the thread will create a, the start method will create an independent path of execution. 
and that independent path of execution starts from run method right if i do not override it where it will go thread class run method it will go now so what is my work i have to call the display method can i write the code here can i modify the code in the thread class run method and then call the display method can i do that yeah can i write in the can i modify the code of thread class we can but it's not all i mean uh, if you modify i mean it's a java dot class file can you modify it no right that means if you do not override what is happening it will go to the thread class run method can you write your logic over there no so that okay. is the reason you need to override the run method whenever you are override a run method what happens you can call whatever the parallel execution that you are doing you can call that method inside a run method and whenever you call the start method your child class run method will be invoked rather than the thread class run method this is the reason why to override the run method any questions does anyone has any questions ansari deepak uh, nikant ramesh no, no, yeah okay ujwal yes sir no no okay so the reason to override a run method is if you do not override the control the start method will call the thread class run method in the thread class run method i cannot write any code but the what is the purpose of creating a thread you wanted to execute some work parallelly where that work will be starting from the run method so uh, we have learned like this is how you can create a uh, thread object by extending a thread class by whenever you are extending a thread class what you need to do first extend thread call start method and then override run method okay if you do not override it will call the parent thread class run method and there you cannot write any code so that is the reason why to override the run method now let us look at the way to create a thread object by using a implement runnable callable will be discussed at the time of thread pools but let us look at implementing runnable and then we will go into a topic called thread what are the different thread states why should i what happens if i call the start method twice etc we'll be looking at now let's look at thread implements thread example 2 okay now since we have learned extending thread class now let us do implements why we are using implements because runnable is a interface correct see runnable is what it's a functional interface a function interface is something which will have only one abstract method now look at here runnable is a interface which has run method now whenever i am implementing an interface what should i do guys we should override the I mean, abstract you know, method I, right yes, yes yeah that means now see you have the different uh, explanation for extending a thread class why do you override and implementing a runnable interface why do you override different explanation correct whenever you are implementing a runnable interface interface is having one abstract method called run method if you are implementing your class you have to override if not your child class will become abstract right but when it comes to a thread class why do you override run method because if you do not override with the start whenever you call the start method start method will call the run method of a thread class in the thread class run method i cannot write my user defined code right so if you override it you can write user defined code and you can get the thread execution so let's override the run method okay once i override the run method sys out run of thread example 2 done now same steps first implements keyword implements enable okay then now uh create thread object okay so now whether it's a runnable 
or whenever you are, whether you are implementing an enable interface or extending a thread class, what is the method which is doing the thread flow of execution or independent path of creation? Which method is doing that? Run method. No, no, independent path of execution. Which method is responsible to do that? Start. Start method, correct? So that means whether you are implementing a runnable interface or uh, extending a thread class, what you need to do? You have to call the start method present in a thread class. And it is what an, it's a uh, instance method present in a thread class. Now, what I need to do, I have to create a thread class object or child class, uh, extending a thread class and doing child class. Then only I can do. Now, the first thing I need in order to call, let's create a main method in order to call the start method of thread class, I need to create thread object. Okay. Now, now, but I, what I'm doing, I'm implementing runnable interface. Now let's go to the thread class. Now in the thread class, you can see some constructors, correct? See? Uh, this constructor you will go whenever you are child implement extending a thread class. But if you look at here, what is this constructor is accepting, guys? Unable interface. Unable interface. Unable interface. That means, can I say, uh, how can you call this? Uh, how can you call this constructor? By passing By a runnable interface. Yeah. Uh, can you pass directly runnable interface? It is nothing but a reference, correct? Now, in order to call this one, since it is an interface, what you need to do, you need to create a class, implement this runnable interface, and then pass the object of the class here, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that if in if you look at thread t equal to new thread. Now, so what is so now what is can I say that my thread example to is a class which is implementing a runnable interface, correct? Now, if I create an object of this thread example to t2 equal to new thread example to, can I say this is t2 is nothing but a runnable object only? Yes, correct. Yes. I can pass that here, right? So that means whenever you are implementing a runnable interface, how do you create a runnable object? By calling the thread class runnable constructor. In order to call this, this is one way or I can club these two lines of code and write in a single line. That is thread t3 equal to new thread of, what I need to do? I need to pass the runtime, uh, I mean runnable object. Can I say this is the class? So new runnable, correct? This is same as creating like this, correct? Both are same or not? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now what I need to do, I need to call the start method t3 dot start now let's now whenever i say t3 dot start so here can i say t3 is nothing but a thread object so it will go to the thread class start method and from there it will create an independent path of execution and that independent path of execution will call the run method right uh, without at line number 15 without passing t2 uh, will it uh, won't it call the uh, run method automatically but thread? here if you see it will create a uh, it will create a thread object but okay. here what you see here in where you have uh, see what i'm trying to say is uh, what okay now here can i say why it is calling you at this class and method only because there is an inheritance relationship between these two correct yes yes so now how can you say if you are creating an object this one why you are, this class run method will be called you have to provide some relation, correct? Okay, if you create okay. an object like this, this, okay, what okay. are you doing? Can I say that I'm passing the my thread example and I'm telling that my call this, see, you are passing this reference. What it will do uh, in this class, if there is a run method, then it will call that, right? If you do not pass it, it, it will call the parent class, thread class run method, right? Yes, yes. Now let's do that also. Now, if I say t dot start, now let's go to thread class, put a run method, breakpoint, and that thread example to put a run method. Now let's debug. If 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 that is happening, then they should have to have created this uh, uh, constructor itself, correct? 
Oh, yes. Now, oh, sorry, I did not put a break point. Let's put a break point here. Here. So here, uh, thread t equal to new thread. Yes, you are calling a thread class constructor and then you are calling a start method, right? The start method will call run method. But earlier, why it is calling your child class run method? You have a, because thread example one and thread, you have an inheritance relationship. If you are overriding a method and with a child class object, you will, child class object will be called. But now, yet do you have any inheritance relationship? No. Only thread class, you are creating a parent class object and call method means it will call your parent class run method only. Look at here. See, it is it is calling the thread zero. Which class run method? Thread class run method. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, now if I go to this one, what I'm passing here, I'm passing thread example two. That means this is a child class. Correct. This reference I'm passing. So whenever yes. you call this start method, they have, they know which class to uh, run method should be called. Correct. Now let's go here. See now if I say t three dot start. See which class run method is called? Sorry, here. Local uh, means local class. Sorry, from here it will go. Let's let me click on. Yeah. From here it will come to your child class, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, that is a beauty. That means whenever you are implementing a runnable interface, what is the constructor you need to call? A thread class constructor, which is taking a runnable reference, you need to call that constructor. Then it will call internally the run method and it will uh, execute the run method. Is it clear, guys? Yes. Yeah. Any questions, anyone so far? Sir, uh, MM2, which one is the best option to create thread? Yeah, well, uh, so implementing a runnable interface is the best option because uh, extending a thread class, what are you doing? You are, by extending a thread class, memory will be occupied for, uh, first of all, by extending a thread class, can you do multiple inheritance? Can you extend one more class if you're extending a thread class? No. So multi-threading, multiple inheritance is not possible, but if you are implementing a runnable interface, can you do one more interface in implementing? Yes. Yes. So that is the first example, first reason. And the second reason is whenever you are extending a thread class, what are you doing? Your child class object you are creating. That means, can I say in your whether you require or not, all your parent class, which is nothing but all the thread class variables methods will occupy the memory? Yes. According to the inheritance principle, correct? Because yes. of uh, inheritance, uh, I mean, whether you use it or not, some or the other memory will be created. The object becomes heavyweight. That is called object becomes heavyweight. But whenever you are implementing a runnable interface and you are passing your runnable reference, so at this point of time, will all the pairing class reference variables will be created? No. Only whichever is required or whichever is overridden, those will be called. So the objects becomes less weight. And uh, you have uh, now here, whenever you are extending a thread class, if you are forgetting to override the run method, then what is the point of uh, writing the code? No, correct. But whenever you are implementing an runnable interface, can you forget to override the run method? No, because it will give you the compilation error, right? These are the differences. The best one is implementing a runnable interface. And uh, on this topic, we have separate class to look at, which is better also. But I just explained at high level since you have asked the question. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Uh, guys, are you able to understand the threads now? Yes. yes. Uh, what about others? Uchwal, Nikan, Madhusudan, Kamal. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. So the tomorrow also will have a class and the Monday will be the last demo class, guys. Uh, Monday in the sense, 16th will be the last demo class. So today you'll be getting an email from the Ashok IT uh, regarding the enrollment and how to uh, join the enrollments and all. If you are interested, please follow that. Okay. 
Any questions? So I I continue the same thing for all the other thread thread topics. Yes. Even whenever I'm writing a thread pool executor framework, I'll explain the same way. I'll write the code and we will debug and then we'll uh, learn the topic. First, I'll talk about the theory for quick five minutes or 10 minutes, and then I will write a program and I will explain. Like if you look at deadlock, volatile, autumn city, reentrant lock, read write lock, thread pools, executor framework for all these things, I'll be writing the code in front of you. Okay. So if no questions, that's all for today, guys. And we'll meet you in the tomorrow class. And if you're interested, and if you understand the way I teach, please enroll for the course. Any questions, concerns, anything? So I take that silence as a no questions. If no questions, that's all for today. And uh, see you soon uh, in the tomorrow class. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining. Have a nice day.